Hello everybody and uh, welcome again to my study. Hopefully listening to me and hearing me um, rather clearer than you have done previously because I've bought a, a newfangled um, microphone and uh, it should be working well. I hope it is anyway. Well this week I'm going to be talking about uh, St Luke. Um, in our sort of uh, lecturing readings we don't often, uh, very often that, that is, uh, concentrate on individuals or feast days or anything like that but uh, the 18th of October is Luke's uh, day so we are celebrating St Luke. Now he has a very distinctive uh, contribution to Christianity, Luke, um, because he was a, a friend and a pupil of St Paul. And in the material that he selected for his gospel, Luke's gospel, he showed that the truths that Paul proclaimed and were proclaiming in his uh, letters uh, were not novel ideas, but they were rooted in the life and teaching of Jesus himself. Because Paul, quite famously, doesn't really much refer to Jesus and his life at all. So Luke's gospel is primarily good news. Not to be read primarily as biography, but just good news. It should be a message of what God has done for us in G Jesus. So I, I suppose what we need to discern is what are the distinguishing characteristics of his gospel that shine through his text. Perhaps the most marked uh, characteristic of Luke is his emphasis on the universality of the Christian faith. Christian faith, its universality. From Simeon's song about Christ being a light to the Gentiles, to the very end where repentance and forgiveness of sin should be preached to all nations. The central theme is that Jesus is the saviour of the whole world. Rather than trace Jesus' ancestry back to Abraham, the ancestor of the Jewish people, as Matthew does in his prologue, uh, Luke traces his ancestry back to Adam in chapter 3 of his Gospel, thus stressing that it is the significance to anyone ever born. For the same reason, Luke gives such a prominent place to the Samaritans in the Gospel the outsiders, the foreigners, to the Jews of the time. So the first sort of dis distinguishing characteristic is that Jesus is good news for the whole world. And in that light, we see the special emphasis Luke gives to the outcasts of society. In the parable of the female sinner who anoints his feet with ointment, the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, the Pharisee and the publican, the thief on the cross, all work together to emphasise that we're not saved by works but by the grace of God. The grace of God freely available to the whole world. Luke's Gospel, gospel gives more uh, emphasis than the other Gospels about Jesus' special compassion for the poor, all tying in for the same reason, the same rationale, and the danger of riches, of course. It is Luke who puts these words into Mary's mouth. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. So Luke relates Jesus' teaching to the uh, problem of materialism, because essentially materialism pushes God from the centre of life. Another special characteristic of Luke's Gospel is the prominence he gives to women. Quite a well-known prominence, this. While the birth narratives in Matthew centre on Joseph, for example, in Luke, Mary is at centre stage. And women feature prominently in the stories, including those about Mary and Martha. We can trace back to Jesus here Paul's doctrine, of course, Remember, Luke was um, a, a traveller with Paul, that in Christ there is neither male nor female. 
Finally, Luke gives more stress to the Holy Spirit and to prayer, both in the life of Jesus and in the continuing work of the church. The Spirit is present with the people who are prophesying, both uh, the birth of John the Baptist and Jesus himself. They're both under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus' career is started in the power of the Spirit, says Luke. And he interprets his mission uh, with Isaiah's words, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Of course, Luke, as the author of Acts, is also the uh, penned the story of Pentecost, uh, which is probably uh, the central story of the book of Acts and uh, sort of colours the entire history of the church. But they are prepared for that event in the gospel itself, Luke's gospel, when he says he, he, the instructions are from Jesus to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Luke connects prayer with Jesus' baptism, his calling of the twelve, the great confession, the transfiguration. This links Jesus to Paul's injunction to pray at all times, as uh, Paul writes in uh, Ephesians. Now Luke never claims to be an actual eyewitness to the risen Christ. But his writings have become instrumental in, or became instrumental rather, in binding the young movement, the way, as it was known in those days, of people together who witnessed to the effect that his spirit had on them. In modern parlance we might call Luke an influencer or a theological educator because he helped change hearts and minds. And even if he was one of the 70 sent out in the gospel story that we heard today, that he wrote himself, or helped Paul on his missionary journeys, like, you know, like, like uh, helping Paul on his missionary journeys, whatever he did in those scenarios, he has changed many millions uh, more hearts and minds through the written word. Many more than anyone could ever have done in person. So by emphasising the universality of the gospel, the compassion for the poor and the lost, the special emphasis he gave to women and the centrality of the Holy Spirit and prayer, Luke has helped mould the character of Christianity, along with Paul, essentially. And he provides the letters and theology of Paul with this grounding that his principles had in the life of Jesus. Luke's gospel is good news and is a message of what God has done for us all in Christ. It is a testimony of faith to be interpreted by faith. The good news, in the end of the day, will only have the power of good news in your life when it becomes appropriated by you and when it becomes good news for you in here. Amen. And I'd like to end with uh, God's blessing. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen.